Hi, and welcome back to B&B The Real Story. You'll notice there is somebody new today. I will let you introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Claire A.U. Claire is a dear friend from college. We used to do improv together in a lovely group called... Dead Serious! Yeah, and what do you do here in the city, Claire? Uh, I'm a performer at Upright Citizens Brigade Theater. I perform at the East Village Theater um, on a Lloyd team called City Mouse. Okay, now, I'm. we're gonna play a little game Yeah. Um, for in honor of Pride and Prejudice. Right. The Bennett sister you most identify yourself with. I would say Elizabeth. I have an older sister. My sister is always preferred. Yes. Over me, which is fine. <laughs> I do comedy now. <laughs> no, I, I love my sister, but like everyone was like, your sister's so hot. And that was my... Maybe. And she's really nice. Oh, she's lovely. Now, if you had to pick between Bingley and Darcy, who would you probably pick? Oh, God, I don't know. I love... Bingley's so sweet. This is turning into like a dating profile. <laughs> I like people who are like open and if they like someone that they're open about it. Today's chapter, well episode, yeah. consists of chapter three in which we get to meet Bingley and Darcy. <gasps> I'm excited! Yay! Um, and so we're gonna divide it up every time. Apparently it's gonna be we. We, I'll take it. All right, no, <laughs> we are splitting the chapter into two chunks. Also, it means you get more Claire time. Oh, that's me! Yeah. Oh, how exciting! I have not given Claire much coffee, so. <laughs> so in the first half of the episode, we just get some background on Bingley yes. and Darcy, and Bingley's quite elusive. He's traveling a lot. He's traveling he's a lot. He's a businessman. Kind of. Kind of. We don't actually know what Bingley what does. What does Bingley do? Well, he's a wealthy guy, so he just has a lot of money. And Maybe he's around. a drug dealer. I don't think he's a drug dealer. I have a bad habit of if I don't understand something or if there's a, a drug store, dealer, I, I assume it's a drug front. Hey guys, drug fronts are a thing. So in the first half of the episode, <laughs> we get to meet, uh, kind of meet Bingley and Dar, so we don't actually get to hear them really talk too much. But don't worry, that's coming in the second half of the episode, so make sure to watch. And uh, we'll be coming back. You'll be seeing us again very soon. My name is Janine Hegarty, and this is Claire Ayu. And this is PMP The Real Story, Episode 3 Meriton Assembly, Part 1. Chapter 3 Not all that Mrs. Bennet, however, with the assistance of her five daughters, could ask on the subject was sufficient to draw from her husband any satisfactory description of Mr. Bingley. They attacked him in various ways, with barefaced questions, ingenious suppositions, and distant surmises. But he eluded the skill of them all, and they were at last obliged to accept the second-hand intelligence of their neighbor, Lady Lucas. Her report was highly favorable. Sir William had been delighted with him, he was quite young, wonderfully handsome, extremely agreeable, and to crown the whole, he meant to be at the next assembly with a large party. Nothing could be more delightful. To be fond of dancing was a certain step towards falling in love, and very lively hopes of Mr. Bingley's heart were entertained. If I can but see one of my daughters happily settled at Netherfield, said Mrs. Bennet to her husband, and all the others equally well married, I shall have nothing to wish for. In a few days, Mr. Bingley returned Mr. Bennet's visit, and sat about ten minutes with him in the library. He had entertained hopes of being admitted to a sight of the young ladies, of whose beauty he had heard much, but he saw only the father. The ladies were somewhat more fortunate, for they had the advantage of ascertaining from an upper window that he wore a blue coat and rode a black horse. An invitation to dinner was soon afterwards dispatched, and already had Mrs. Bennet planned the courses that they were to do credit to her housekeeping, when an answer arrived which deferred it all. Mr. Bingley was obliged to be in town the following day, and consequently unable to accept the honor of their invitation, etc. Mrs. Bennet was quite disconcerted. She could not imagine what business he could have in town so soon after his arrival in Hertfordshire. And she began to fear that he might be always flying about from one place to another and never settled at Netherfield as he ought to be. 
Lady Lucas quieted her fears a little by stating the idea of his being gone to London only to get a large party for the ball. And a report soon followed that Mr. Bingley was to bring twelve ladies and seven gentlemen with him to the assembly. The girls grieved over such a number of ladies, but were comforted the day before the ball by hearing that instead of twelve, he had brought only six with him from London, his five sisters and a cousin. And when the party entered the assembly room, it consisted of only five altogether. Mr. Bingley, his two sisters, the husband of the eldest, and another young man. Mr. Bingley was good-looking and gentlemanlike. He had a pleasant countenance and easy, unaffected manners. His sisters were fine women with an air of decided fashion. His brother-in-law, Mr. Hurst, merely looked the gentleman. But his friend Mr. Darcy soon drew the attention of the room by his fine, tall person, handsome features, noble mien, and the report which was in general circulation within five minutes after his entrance of his having ten thousand a year. The gentleman pronounced him to be a fine figure of a man. The ladies declared he was much handsomer than Mr. Bingley, and he was looked at with great admiration for about half the evening till his manners gave a disgust which turned the tide of his popularity. For he was discovered to be proud, to be above his company, and above being pleased, and not all his large estate in Derbyshire could then save him from having a most forbidding, disagreeable countenance, and being unworthy to be compared with his friend. Mr. Bingley had soon made himself acquainted with all the principal people in the room. He was lively and unreserved, danced every dance, was angry that the ball closed so early, and talked of giving one himself at Netherfield. Such amiable qualities must speak for themselves. What a contrast between him and his friend! Mr. Darcy danced only once with Mrs. Hurst, and once with Miss Bingley, declined being introduced to any other lady, and spent the rest of the evening in walking about the room speaking occasionally to one of his own party. His character was decided. He was the proudest, most disagreeable man in the world, and everybody hoped that he would never come there again. Amongst the most violent against him was Mrs. Bennet, whose dislike of his general behavior was sharpened into particular resentment by his having slighted one of her daughters. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to tune in to the second part of the episode, which consists of the second part of that was flipping people to be. If you're British, I'm really sorry. Um, but it was thank you for watching. Yes, indeed. Thank you for watching. Uh, second part of the episode contains probably one of the most famous lines in all of Pride right. and Prejudice. Say um, it, Janine. Like I remember it off the top of my head. Way to put me on the spot, Claire. You will just have to find out what it is, but it is said by the, well, prideful as we know right now, and apparently uh, someone with- Prejudicial. <laughs> Prejudicial. <laughs> Prejudicial, yes. Mr. Darcy, who apparently has zero redeeming qualities right now. So let's just say he definitely gets himself into some hot water and he says something that will really influence his relationship with everybody in the book, pretty much. Um, so it's a pretty pivotal line, so you really should just stay tuned and watch Remember, this Remember, guys, episode. first impressions uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, are very important. Darcy's sure. not good at that. No, he's not. No. So, stay tuned. Episode, ha second half of episode, coming soon. And by coming soon, I mean, it's listed right below. It's oh, right there. It's somewhere below us. It says next episode. Oh, you should check it out. We got real quiet. I don't know.